morning, and welcome to the journalists on the call. I'm Cherie Duval-Jones with the FDA's Office of Media Affairs. Thank you for joining our media call to discuss the FDA's proposal to remove oral phenylephrine as a nasal decongestant active ingredient from the cold cough allergy bronchodilator and anti-asthmatic drug products for over-the-counter human use monographs. Today, the FDA announced that it is proposing to remove oral phenylephrine as an active ingredient in OTC monograph drug products for the temporary relief of nasal congestion after an agency review of the available data determined it is not effective. A press release on today's announcement has been posted to the FDA's website and contains additional details about today's action. In a moment, Dr. Peter Stein, Director of the FDA's Office of New Drugs and the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, otherwise known as CEDAR, and Dr. Teresa Michelle, Director of FDA's Office of Non-Prescription Drugs, also within CEDAR, will give their opening remarks. After their remarks, we will move to the question and answer portion of the call. Reporters on the phone will be in a listen-only mode until we open the call up for questions. As a reminder, this audio call is being recorded and will be available on the FDA's YouTube page about an hour after the call ends. When asking a question, please state your name and affiliation. Also, please ensure questions pertain to today's announcement and limit yourself to one question and one follow-up so we can get to as many questions as possible. With that, I will now turn the call over to Dr. Stein, Director of the FDA's Office of New Drugs. Great. Good morning, all, and thank you for, for joining this call. We're here today to talk about the FDA's proposed order to remove all phenylephrine as an active ingredient in over-the-counter cough and cold products. All phenylephrine is widely used as a nasal decongestive active ingredient in both single ingredient products and in combination with other ingredients. This proposed order is following an agency review of the available data that determined that the ingredient is not effective for this use. To make this determination, the agency conducted a comprehensive review of all available data on the safety and efficacy of oral phenylephrine. Last fall, the FDA held a non-prescription drug advisory committee meeting to discuss the generally recognized as safe and effective grass status of oral phenylephrine as a nasal decongestant. The committee unanimously concluded that the current scientific data do not support that the recommended dosage of orally administered phenylephrine is effective as a nasal decongestant. After extensive review of the data and taking into consideration the advice of the advisory committee, we're taking this next important step in the process by proposing to remove oral phenylephrine as a nasal decongestant active ingredient from the OTC cough and cold monograph because it, because it is not effective for that use. It's important to note that phenylephrine is an ingredient in some nasal sprays to treat nasal congestion as well. The FDA's action today is only related to orally administered phenylephrine and not the nasal spray form. It's also important to point out that the proposed order is not being issued because of safety concerns about oral phenylephrine. Today's proposed order demonstrates the continued role of the FDA to ensure that Americans have access to medicines that are not only safe, but that are safe and effective. Well, thank you for attending this, and I'll turn this over to Dr. Michelle for her comments. Thank you, Dr. Stein, for your remarks. I'll also note that the FDA is seeking public comments on this proposed order on oral phenylephrine. Details about how to comment can be found in the press release or on FDA's OTC monographs at FDA website. If, after considering the comments, the FDA concludes that oral phenylephrine is not effective, the agency will issue a final order removing oral phenylephrine from the associated OTC monograph. 
OTC monograph drugs would then no longer be allowed to contain oral phenylephrine as a nasal decongestant. The FDA would provide manufacturers with appropriate time to either reformulate or remove drug products containing oral phenylephrine from the market. Consumers should also know a few things about today's action, especially as we enter cough and cold season. First, if your drug product contains oral phenylephrine, you may continue to use it. Some non-prescription drug products contain other active ingredients, such as acetaminophen, in addition to phenylephrine. The presence of phenylephrine in these products does not affect how the other active ingredients work to treat those symptoms. In addition, drug products that contain oral phenylephrine can continue to be marketed until the agency issues a final order. It bears repeating that today's action is not due to safety concerns with the use of phenylephrine. To find out if your medication contains phenylephrine, look at the active ingredients section of the drug tax label. Because a variety of different drug products may be sold under the same brand name, consumers should always read the drug tax label to determine which ingredients are in a medication, as well as important warnings and directions for use. Second, consumers should know that there is a range of safe and effective drugs and other treatments that are available for temporary relief of nasal congestion symptoms due to allergies or a common cold. If you have questions about what products to use, the FDA recommends you talk with your doctor or pharmacist about options. The FDA remains committed to using all available tools to assure the safety and effectiveness of FDA-regulated drug products and to help ensure that Americans have access to medications that are safe and effective for their labeled uses. Thank you. And now I'll turn it back to the moderator to begin the question and answer portion of the call. Thank you. Thank you. This time, we'll... sorry, go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Michelle. Um, at this time, we will begin the question and answer portion of the briefing. As a reminder, this call is being recorded. And asking a question, please state your name and affiliation. Also, please ensure questions pertain to today's announcement and limit yourself to one question and one follow-up so we can get as many questions as possible. As possible. Operator, we'll take the first question. Okay. And as a quick reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star then one on your phone. Remember to unmute your phone and record your name and organization when prompted. If you'd like to withdraw that question, you may press star two. Okay, and our first question comes from Lauren Gardner with Politico. Your line is open. Thanks for taking my question. Um, could you uh, give a little more detail about what, quote, appropriate time means for, um, for manufacturers that if this proposed order were to be finalized would have to either reformulate or remove their products from the market? Uh, what exactly would that process look like? Certainly. So this is a, a multi-step process. As I noted, we start with the proposed order, and then there's a 180-day comment period from the public. FDA will then consider the um, public comments before issuing a final order. And at that point, we'll provide manufacturers with additional time to either reformulate or remove drug products containing oral phenylephrine from the market. And that time frame will be laid out in the uh, final order. Uh, and quick follow-up, is there any um, precedent uh, for this happening for, um, for a, a product of FDA-regulated, um, FDA, for a, an FDA-regulated product that, um, sorry, can you point to an example of where this has maybe happened before and how the FDA had to engage with industry on something of this magnitude? Certainly. So while the order process itself is fairly new, uh, we have had the monograph system in place for over 50 years. And during that time, we issue um, proposed and final regulations. And so it's sort of a similar 
types of cases where there's a public comment period before the uh, final uh, regulation is put in place. An example of when we've done this would be for the antiseptics. Uh, and as you may remember, there were a number of antiseptic active ingredients that were found not generally recognized as safe and effective, such as triclosan. And then there was a phase out period uh, for those ingredients. Operator, we'll take the next question. Okay, and our next question comes from Alexander Ten with CBS News. Your line is open. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, can you tell us more about what the agency was doing between the ADCOM last year and now? I mean, why is it that this decision couldn't happen sooner? Certainly. So between the ADCOM and now, we have been reviewing the results of the ADCOM and uh, preparing all of the information that's in the proposed order. So we reviewed all of the available data on oral phenylephrine uh, that shows that phenylephrine is not effective to treat nasal congestion. And you may remember that newer data became available on oral phenylephrine since FDA last evaluated it. So we evaluated this newer clinical data within the context of that long history of oral phenylephrine use. So at this point, based on the available data, and of course taking into account the advice of the advisory committee, uh, we're proposing that oral phenylephrine is not effective to relieve nasal congestion at the recommended dose set forth in the monograph. And then one quick follow-up on that. Is there a possibility that the proposed order could change based on, you know, feedback, for example, from the industry. I know that you said it's open for public comment. Talk us through what would be required to change the order in case, you know, even newer data becomes available, suggesting maybe that it isn't ineffective. Certainly. So anything that's submitted during the public comment period, we will consider and take that under advisement as we um, determine what would go in the final order. Seeing no other questions, Cedric, can you also remind everyone how to um, call in and submit a question if there are any more? Sure. As another quick reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star then one on your touchstone phone. One moment to see if we have any more questions. Okay, well, this concludes today's media briefing. A replay will be available on the FDA's YouTube page about an hour after the call concludes. Thank you all for joining. Have a great day.